it's time for sports with Myra and uh, a real log jam at the rink. How, how are all these guys? There's a lot of things going on at the rink. The ice, I don't know. There are way too many guys on the ice. Uh, Andrew, I know you're known around the world as the guy who didn't know what canoodling is, but uh, I know you know the old adage that you never get a second chance to make a first impression in the hockey players at the Victoria Royals rookie camp. I'd better take those words to heart. There are a lot of bodies on the ice at Save on Foods Memorial Center. 147 invitees from all over Canada and parts of the United States all hoping to catch the eye of coach Dave Lowry and his staff. And there he is. The coach has picked his perch, evaluating the players from high up in the stands. This is the first time he is seeing the team's inaugural draft pick live in action. 16-year-old defenseman Joe Hicketts, the franchise's first ever pick, was taken 12th overall in last year's Bantam draft. We spent last season with the Okanagan Hockey School in Penticton, where he focused on getting bigger, faster, and stronger. The interior is nice, of course, but Hicketts hopes to be on the blue line in Victoria this fall. You know, I want to be here real bad, but it starts in camp, and you know, you just not a shoe in on any team. So there's expectations, and you have to perform up to them. But you, know, you kind of shove them aside, and you know, you do what you have to do on the ice to make the team. Are you ready? Do you feel? I feel I'm ready. Um, I've been working, working my butt off all summer, and they, uh, even going into last year, the decision to go to OHA for not on, not only the ice development but off ice every day. So. I feel like I've, I've put a lot of time and effort into this over the last year and a half. Well, Hicketts isn't the only 16-year-old blue liner that the Royals are big on. The team signed American Jack Walker today, and somehow his talents were overlooked at the 2011 draft. Not that the Royals are complaining. They feel like they've just scored another first-rounder. This kid is good. Walker helped Team USA to the gold medal at the 2012 U-17 Five Nations Tournament and represented his country at the 2012 Winter Youth Olympics last January. Of course, having Ben, his brother here, um, uh, it, it helped in a lot of ways. It kept us in touch with what was going on uh, with Jack. Uh, it put us in a position where we could follow him and, and see how his progression was. Um, and yeah, we're really excited to get him. And when he showed up here yesterday, uh, he, he looked like he was ready to go. He really wanted to get on the ice. What's the likelihood of a 16-year-old or how many will actually crack this roster? It really is up to them. Uh, there's no reason why they can't. It's just a matter of whether or not they win the job. And you know, from what we've seen today, um, you know, there are a number of guys who have showed up uh, with, um, you know, big, strong um, uh, bodies ready to go. And so um, we'll see how they fare when they get to main camp, um, but it, it sure looks good for those guys. Well, heading into week four of the BCFC, the West Shore Rebels are starting to look like a playoff contender. Now 2-1 and one after a 34-21 victory over the Kamloops Broncos. The Rebels' offense is clicking both on the ground and in the air. They could very well make it a long Saturday night for their opponents from Chilliwack. Well, if this is how intense the Rebels are at practice, the Huskers may just want to stay on the mainland. A couple of teammates get into a bit of a shoving match last night. The Rebels are meaner and better than they were when they thumped the Huskers 46-8 in Week 2. And even though the Rebels are rolling right now, the coaches say there's still plenty of room for improvement. I think we haven't quite right, gotten anywhere close to where our full potential is, which is promising and which is, you know, obviously optimistic because we still got a lot, uh, a lot of growing to do and we can be a lot better. We've had a lot of injuries uh, lately, so what happens is a lot of times guys coming out on maybe a Wednesday or Thursday or maybe even just Thursdays or Fridays, you don't get the meshing as with the other receivers as well and things like that. So routes can be a little bit sloppy, as we say. Um, so we're we're just trying to keep, you know, keep on the right path and just get better every week. Mark Black won his starting quarterback duties back after throwing four touchdown passes against the Broncos, one of which was hauled down by wide receiver Eric Eggleston. Now he's quickly becoming Black's new favorite target through the air, leads the league in receiving yards with 274, complementing the running game of Greg Morris perfectly. They make it really easy for me when they make the plays that they do. Like Eggleston's just he's blown up this year. Um, uh, just. He's worked his tail off for the past few years here, and now he's finally getting his chance at it, and he's, he's just running away with it right now. So, yeah, if we have people on our team working that hard, like Eggleston, then I, you know, I don't have to do much, and I look good. So I appreciate his effort. 
Well, Tiger Woods and Roy McIlroy were paired together for today's opening round at the Barclays. They shot a 68 and 69, respectively. Padraig Harrington stole a little of their thunder, firing a 7 under 64. He has a one-stroke lead over Americans Nick Watney and Brian Harmon. Uh, Lori Kane waves the Rainy start at the Canadian Women's Open in Coquitlam, but that won't dampen the spirit of veteran Canadian Lori Kane, sitting on 99 career top 10 finishes today. She wasn't great, but she wasn't bad. She's the top Canadian at even par. Kane was paired up with Michelle Wee. Wee, who won this event two years ago and a runner-up last year, found herself in the bunker a few times. That's okay. She's from Hawaii, so she knows how to play the sand. She's plus two and tied for 84th. Your clubhouse leader is this year's U.S. Open champion, Na Yeon Choi of South Korea. And watch the beautiful, nice, easy this swing will equal the perfect approach shot as the ball nuzzles up to the hole. She carded three consecutive birdies on the front and finished with a 567. Choi has a two-shot lead over Americans Moira Dunn and Mandy Kim. Well, it's been 12 years since the Canadian men's basketball team has qualified for the Olympics, so that would be Sydney 2000. A point guard named Steve Nash was on that team, and Jay Triano was the coach. Well, to help get our boys back competing on the Olympic stage, the player and the coach are reuniting, but this time in a GM coach capacity. As the head of the national program, Nash has picked Triano to head coach the men's program. For me, what, what, what we're really lucky is... is um, Canada basketball is that one of our own has played in three Olymp well qualified for three Olympics, uh, coached in one, uh, coached in the NBA, has been an NBA executive, and you know that that's something we've never really had. And so to be able to call one of our own uh, and have a resume and qualifications like that is pretty special. What do you think? Uh, no, that really doesn't surprise anybody. They're pretty good friends. So two Canadians at the helm. I think it's a good move. Nash can still play for a while too. There he can. Get out there like on the floor. Line. Yeah, exactly. If you're into that. Thanks, Myra. You're welcome, Andrew.